China, like few decades before. <laughs> Nostalgia. So <laughs> monthly prayer meeting last night, we sang songs that was like four or five decades above. And she was so, Basimo was so happy singing it. <laughs> she has been singing for a long time, but it feels like there was no sound transmitted. Praise the Lord. Today we are reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Chapter 8 and uh, 7 and 8 are the observation of the preacher under the sun. I also want to observe to know what he has observed. But I also want to go into application. So I will go half, half, half the observation and half the application. So I spend half of my uh, sharing on uh, observation and also s half of my time will be spent on how to apply. Under the sun. How to receive enjoyment uh, despite uh, hardship. How to receive goodness among the, in the midst of evil. Good. How to receive what is good in the midst of evil. How do we do that? I want to share two words. Chapter 8, verse, verse 6. There is a distrust in ev evil. The mystery of man increases greatly. Verse, uh, is verse 6, misery, mean evil, bad. Those who fear God will receive goodness. That's goodness. That's the good that is mentioned in the uh, book of Genesis. The, uh, the preacher has observed that the world is going through a lot of evil, a lot of um, hardship. So what should we do? During that process, Verse 1 and verse 17, we should pay attention to. Or verse 1 and 16 and 17. Who is like a wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine and the sternness of his face is changed. Who is like a wise man? No one can be like a wise man. Who knows the interpretation of a thing? The answer is negative, right? Which means no one's right. It means no one can be like a wise man and no one knows the interpretation of a thing. The answer to this question, these two questions are negative. And verse 17, 16 and 17, when I apply my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, even though no one sees, even though one sees no sleep day or night, then I saw all the work of God that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. But though a man labors to discover it, yet he will not find it. Moreover, though a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. Verse 1, who is like a wise man? 
Who knows the interpretation of a thing? And at the end, I apply my heart to know wisdom. Yes, I want to be a wise man. And to see the business that is done on earth, then I realize one thing. I apply my heart to know wisdom to see the business that is done on earth. And then I saw, I saw one thing. I saw all the work of God. No one can find out. No one can understand the work of God. Even though, uh, though a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. I want to know it. I want to know everything. But my conclusion is, the work of God, no one can find out. Even a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. Unable to find out, unable to find out, unable to find it. Let's keep saying it from verse 1 to uh, verse 16 and 17. A wise man attempts to know it, to know the business on earth that is done on earth. To know the, all the work of God, but he will not be able to find it. And right in the middle, talk about how he searched it, how he find it, how he's this late discovered it. what he has observed, what he has seen, what he has noticed. But the conclusion is no one can find it. No one. Though a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. So who is like a wise man? Who knows the interpretation of a thing? The answer is no to these two. And at the end, though a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. I want to be a wise man, I can't. Even though he is a wise man, he cannot find it. He does not know the interpretation of a thing. No one knows the work of God. And then, you know, verse 1, verse 16 and 17, right in the middle, it, it talks about his discovery, his interpretation, his observation. Divided into two paragraphs, verse 1 to 8 is the first paragraph. The king's does as he's pleased at any time, and misery, evil, is on men. The preacher was at the time of Persian emperor. They were the defeated. They were the defeated. Under the rule of Persian, how should they live their life? They face a lot of difficulties. Financially, even if they worked hard, would they be able to earn money, to make money? Not necessarily. They've made a lot of friends. Does it mean that they will have uh, peace and safety? Not necessarily. They do a lot of things. Can they accumulate a, a lot of wealth, build a lot of houses to to live in, not necessarily. Of course, as they work hard, to a certain extent, it will help. But who will inherit their labor, their hard work? We don't know. Can they enjoy what they receive? They don't know. That's 
what the book of Ecclesiastes keeps mentioning vanity of vanities. Everything is vanity. It's vanity because it's something that beyond our control. We cannot control our destiny. They want to observe, to know the the business of the world. They want to know the principle of the how the world operates. Then we can avoid the evil and go and receive the good. Then we can av avoid misery, avoid all the evil, and receive all the good things. That's why we want to know what how the world runs. How the world operates, then we can more clever, and I can grasp these uh, skills. Then I can have a better outcome. My life will be better. Everything in my life will be smooth. That's man's thinking, but the preachers say that's not the case. If you try to find the interpretation of the world, you want to know the how the world operates, and then you hold on to these principles and you li you live your life accordingly. It's in vain because there is no principle to abide by. You cannot find any principle. Why? Why can't you? That's why it's tell you here. It goes on to explain. I say, verse two, keep the king's commandments for the sake of uh, your oath to God. It says here, I say, but the Chinese, uh, uh, the original text says, I keep the commandments of the king's commandment. And okay, a man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the sternness of his face is changed. Verse one, part, the later part of verse one. It's good to have wisdom. Makes his face shine, so there will be glory on him. And then he become a good man. Change his um, anger. He change his temperament. If you understand something, they can change. People can change. And they here say, I keep the command king's commandments for the sake of your oath to God. Verse 2. I trust in my God. I trust that God exists, God lives. Then that's why I want to keep the commandments of God, of King. Because the King is ordained by God. No kingship was established other than God. God put him in that position, that's why he's a king. If God does not put him in the kingship, he does not have the kingship. That's why you need to keep king's commandment. Do not be hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand from or for an evil thing, for he does whatever pleases him. Verse 3. Before the king, do not be hasty to go from his presence. And do not take your stand for an evil thing. So the house of the people of Judah were in the under the ruin of ruling of uh, Persia. Everyone is under the rule of a king, of the Persian king. So if you appear before the king, you need to be careful. Do not be hasty to go from his presence. If the king has not told you to leave, do not just run away from the king. A same for our co-workers. <laughs> Pastor Joshua and Simo have not asked you to leave but then you run away. Do you think I don't know? Of course I know. This is not my business. Um, it's not my place to say anything. It's not my department. 
I will show my face. We have so many coworkers. Okay, I will just walk away. No one knows. I will do something more important for the church. For God, I have some more something more important to do. Okay, Pastor Joshua, you do what you want, and I do what I want. I do my ministry, and then you know we delegate work, and I run away. <laughs> okay, we 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 run away from each other, and the Chinese is just sounds like sham. That's why during morning devotion, many people, many coworkers do not appear. That's not good. Of course, I'm not the king mentioned in the book of Ecclesiastes, right? <laughs> you have authority over you. How should you behave before your authority? Do not be hasty to go from king's presence. Do not just care about your own business. You need to care about your the what your authority cares. That's the ministry before your authority. Do not take your stand for an evil thing. It's not easy to say that. To explain. Do not go. Do not stand a word in an evil. Do not take your stand in your own word. In evil, in sin. In evil, for example, you have said something. You really want to do what you have said. You want to make your words good, right? Do not insist your stand before the king. Do not insist your way before God, before king. What you say is unimportant. What the king says is important. Do not be hasty to go from his presence and care about your own business. But do not be care about what you have said. Otherwise, if you do that, it's an evil because your word may not be good. Well, the king's words may not be good either, may not be right. But there is nothing about right or wrong in the world. In the time of the people of Judah, that's what the world was like. Why should we not be hasty to go from uh, the king's presence and do not take our stand for an evil thing? For he, the king, does whatever pleases him. Verse 3. <laughs> there is a Chinese <laughs> fictional uh, character. It's like his name is Kor. He does whatever he pleases. He does whatever he pleases. At any time, any way, he does what he likes. As he's pleased, he does what he wants. Everything he does is like this. His way, his time. He doesn't care about what you think. He doesn't say, okay, this is the time I should do A and this is the time I should do B. No, no. To the king, <laughs> any time, he remembers it, he thinks of it, then he does. What he hearts wants, he does as he please. The king does whatever pleases him. What pleases his heart. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? Verse 4.
There is power in His Word, not in your Word. His will counts, not your will. His Word is to be carried out, not about your plan. The power is in His hand. He can do whatever He likes. No one can say, what are you doing? You cannot do such things. You cannot do such things. You cannot say to the king like this, he who keeps his commands will experience nothing harmful. Verse 5. Whoever keeps the king's commandments will not will not taste or experience evil. Uh, harmful here actually means evil. The, the evil thing. They, they will not taste, he will not taste the evil word of the king. The evil word of the king. So in the time of Persian emperor, you need to obey the king's commandment. If you obey king's commandment, then the, the king will not, you know, take it out on you. He will not speak evil against you. Then you will not taste, you will not experience, then you will not uh, taste this evil words the king speaks against you. The evil word of the king will not come upon you. His punishment will not come upon you. You keep his commandments. You just do as what he says. He will not punish you. then you will not experience judgment, punishment from the king. The evil word. Evil word actually also means judgment. Because of every... Uh, a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. If you have wisdom, then you can discern both time and judgment. Verse 5. Time. What does this time refer to? What is the time? What is the timing? You can discern. And judgment. Uh, judgment is verdict. The verdict declared by the king. You can... Um, discern the verdict of the king. You know it's the heart of the king. The wise man can do this. But there is no wise man, right, at the end. Verse 16 and 17, that's his conclusion. There's no wise man. You cannot find anyone wise. No wise man. And he can't understand. He doesn't know anything. What is timing? What is time? What is the verdict of the king? You don't know. Verse 6, because for every matter, there is a time and judgment. For every matter, matter here, The English Bible says uh, business or matter. But in original text, it's not business. Oh, the original text is pleasure. Because for every pleasure, whether you like it or not, preference, your liking, something that you like. Every pleasure... The pleasure of the king, his heart, his will. 
there is a time and judgment. And his verdict, his judgment, his verdict, his time. Or his verdict, his judgment. Verdict, that means it's his judgment. The king, according to his heart, he can do what he like. So, oh, this is the time, and he would just do whatever he like. He would just say what he likes whenever he likes it. Every pleasure, what the king wants to do, there is a time and verdict. It's something that we cannot find out. We will not be able to tell. The people of Judah were serving the Persian king, but they did not know what's in the heart of the Persian king. They didn't know when the king would do what. They didn't know when the king would say what. So his observation, though the misery of man increases greatly, certainly, though actually the original text is certainly, certainly, Or therefore, as the king does things this way, therefore, therefore, not though, the original text would be therefore, the misery of man increases greatly. Misery increases greatly on a man. There's something bad, there's misery, there's evil. The misery, and this misery increases on everyone, and increase greatly, because that's what your authority is like, and the whole world is like this. You don't know the king's business, his heart. That's why we need to obey the king's commandments. But does it mean that you obey the king's commandments? Does it mean that you will be spared from all evil? It doesn't, it's not always the case. But it's definitely better than not obey the king's commandment. No one knows what the king would do. No one knows when he would do what. That's why when the man's misery weighs heavily upon him. What's the misery? For he does not know what will happen. So what can, who can tell him when it will occur? Verse 7. He didn't know anything about the future. He cannot control anything. That's the vanity of vanities in the book of Ecclesiastes. He cannot control anything. No one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, and no one has power in the day of death. No one can lengthen their life by one day more. And no one has power in the day of death. There is no release from that war, and wickedness will not deliver those who are given to it. Wickedness cannot deliver that person. You will not be saved by doing good. You cannot be saved by doing wicked. Nothing can be changed. No one can be spared from such battle. Everyone is under the weight of misery. Verse 9, all this I have seen and apply my heart to every work that is undone under the sun. There is a time in which one man rules over another to his own hurt.
so this K rules over that person to his own hurt. Now the second paragraph. <laughs> I've been carried away. The second paragraph. We do not know the work of God. When we end, we we should enter into God's presence and fear Him and receive blessing, receive enjoyment. What should we do among this uh, misery? The observation of the preacher was we need to come before God and enter into His presence. Fear him and receive all the goodness. Verse 10 Then I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of uh, holiness, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This also is vanity. 11. Because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. The sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Too light a sentence against evil work. And it's not executed speedily. It's not a heavy sentence. That's why the hearts of the son of men are not fearful and they are set in them to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and his days are prolonged, yes, I surely know that it will be well with those who fear God, who fear before him. The evil will not it will not be well with the wicked, nor will he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Verse 13. Those who walk upright, they will not be buried in a holy place. But the wicked will be buried in their own grave. The outcomes of the evil is better than the righteous one. Under the rule of king, sometimes it may end up like this. That's the outcome. But that's why people set their heart to do evil. What is justice? What is peace? It's hard to grasp. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and his days are prolonged, but and his days are prolonged. Even though the whole world is going this way, not good, we cannot control anything. You do good doesn't mean that it doesn't guarantee that your outcome will be good. But then he said that there is. I know that we must uh, surely know that you'll be well with those who fear God, who fear before Him. Verse 12. So we go come with, uh, before God, before in God's presence. We seek Him, we fear Him. You seek God. At the end, you will receive good, good things. But for the wicked one, they are away from God, they are not good. There is a vanity, verse 14, which occurs on earth. Verse 14 to 15. The wicked and the righteous. Sometimes the righteous has the outcome as the wicked. It's like he never does good. What's his conclusion? The preacher's conclusion. We need to enjoy what God has given him under the sun, to eat and drink and be merry, for this will remain with him in his labor all the days of his life which God gives him under the sun. What is the best for a man? The king is high, is above all, but 
God is above the king. So we need to obey God, the king's commandments, but more so, we must fear God. We seek God in everything. We come before Him. He ain't say fear God who fear before Him, right? Uh, I surely know that it will be well with those who fear God who fear before Him. So you seek God. Yes, we obey King, uh, King's commandments, but more so we must seek God and fear Him. God, the, the King does whatever He pleases Him in His time, His way. We cannot choose. We obey King's commandments. But more so, we should fear God. What God, everything God has given us, the portion God has given me, I need to enjoy. The preacher was saying that in this world, do not pursue anything from the king. Do not pursue anything from the nation, from the country. Or how you act, how you move in the world, in the society. No, there's no set way. You cannot control anything. There is no formula, no rules to abide, to go by. It's random. It's at any time. So whatever he please, wherever he pleases. Even though you are a wise man, you cannot find it. No one can find it out. But we know one thing. I surely know God is above the sun. He rules over all. I seek Him. No one knows the work of God on earth, including the king's verdict, his heart, his time. We don't know. The king himself doesn't know. All in the hand of God. So we fear God. We seek Him in everything. We seek God in everything. God will give us enjoyment. He will give us pleasure. God will give him your give you your portion from heaven. Then we enjoy the portion given from by God. Do not think too much about it. I will end here. The message. That's the end of the message today. Let's all stand. Let's come before God and fear God.